it's almost impossible to make any kind of prescriptive statement without inferring or without burying into that the assumption that we have the faculty of choice. It doesn't mean that our choices are not determined, but it does mean that we have the faculty of choice. If you're saying that you should do this, or it would be better if you did this, or this is a good idea, inherent in that is the idea that, I guess what the Greeks would call prohydesis, the faculty of choice exists. Um, and I don't think you can get around that as long as you're making a prescriptive statement. Now, <clears throat> is love and hate a choice? I'm not saying is it a free choice or not, but is it a choice? Do we have the option of liking or lumping things? Is that an either-or thing? Is our pro racist involved in any way at all in that way, in that regard. I would argue that it is. Now, um, in that sense, everything more or less becomes, I won't say value neutral, but I would say without inherent value, as Ligotti put it. There's nothing of inherent value in existence. Um, but value is placed on things by that which values us, whatever usness means. Um, and that value is not necessarily good or evil, and it's not necessarily categorical, and it's not necessarily one or the other. Um, I would say that it's more along the lines of like it or lump it. It's more along the lines of love it or hate it. Um, fear it or love it. Um, now, we live in a universe in which I would agree a great deal is determined. An enormous amount of what I experience or um, what is going on in this universe or in my own existence even is completely out of my hands now I talk a lot about amor fati and love of fate love of that which is necessary love of that over which you have no control um one of my favorite uh, <laughs> figures of fun, I guess, is what I... I haven't invented this term, but the angry white male. The guy who sits in front of his TV and just keeps changing the channel to find more things to be angry about. Um, he's angry about things he has absolutely no control over. And the very fact of his lack of control makes him angrier. <laughs> uh, it's like being in quicksand, and the more you struggle, the deeper you sink. Now, I find that sort of a figure of fun because, in a sense, he's his own victim in as much as there are any real victims in this universe. Um, he's engaged his faculty of choice to lump everything instead of liking it. Um, he has the option, I would argue, of loving what he sees on the news, or perhaps not loving what he sees on the news, but loving the fact that he is living in a world in which all of this stuff is happening. <laughs> um, love of what is necessary is not the same thing as being glad that things are the way they are and not something else. You're sort of saying, this is the way it is. This is completely out of my hands and in this I completely agree with the hard determinists um, I mentioned yesterday uh, the concept of entropy and the vast futility that is, uh, is involved in that um, yeah 
how about loving that? Loving not the fact that you, you don't love the fact that the universe will eventually sort of blank itself out. You love the fact that you live in a universe that will ultimately blank itself out. You see it as necessary. You cultivate that love. You love your own situation in a universe where everything is ultimately utterly futile. <laughs> um, I keep quoting uh, from the Cloud Atlas, Son Me 351, where uh, it, it, I just recently watched that movie and it shocked me because I didn't know what it was and I just popped it into my DVD player. Yes, I still have a DVD player. And um, it, uh, it fascinated me that uh, this movie dealt so interestingly in the concept of Amor Fati. I picked it up immediately, then I went on the internet and sure enough, everyone else would say, oh yeah, that movie has powerful Nietzschean uh, undertones to it. Now, again, I'm not really a Nietzschean here, because I can only imagine what Nietzsche would make of Tantra. He'd just say, what a pile of garbage! So, I'm, I'm more or less, as I I'm used the term sadhana or sadhana uh, yesterday, I just pick up bits wherever I find them, and I don't have any coherent ism. Um, uh, Phoenix Chastain said, well, why don't you prescribe something to us? Why do you keep saying all these generalizations and say, what are we supposed to do? Well, once a long time ago, I attempted to do that after a lot of badgering, and it sounded insane. Um, and I knew it was going to sound insane in advance. So I'm more or less attempting to merely to set a certain point of view before we actually decide to take action here. What is your evaluation of the entire cosmos and your position in it? It's not whether or not there is, there is good or evil in the universe. There is, it's more or less epictetus, what you can control and what you can't control. You engage your pro racist to um, try to control that which you can control and ignore that, or not, not, not ignore, but relate differently to that which is necessary. It's kind of an interesting interplay between Nietzsche and the Stoics which Nietzsche certainly wasn't. <laughs> um, but you don't say that what is happening in the world is good. Like, let's say I'm uh, a guy getting herded into the gas chambers in Auschwitz-Birkenau or something like that, and I, I know what's about to happen. I'm not going to tell myself, oh, this is great, you know, that's uh, Ned Flanders. Uh, no, thank you. Um, but you can say, and this is Son Me 351's speech, you can say, I accept and I embrace the fact that this is my individual fate. This is necessity. This is out of my hands. She says our lives are not our own. Um, I, I'm making reference to a movie that you may not have seen. Um, but the faculty of choice coupled with love and hate or um, cultivating love and hate I think are what I'm getting at in this small regard here. The whole thing about life denial versus life affirmation is vast beyond imagining. <laughs> Um, it's probably the ultimate argument, uh, as far as I'm concerned. It does seem to be the only argument that's really worth making. First you make the argument, then you act on that. Um, very few people, I think, act on either one. Very few people who conclude life is worth living commit salikana, which the Jains do, where you lay down and you religiously fast yourself to death. But that, to me, is what anyone who truly is convinced of the utter lack of in, uh, of positive value in existence would do. You would just say, I'm out of here. Right here, right now. I'm out of here. Um, I'm just leaving. Where's the exit door? Um, whereas most people who believe that they that life is worth living don't really act on it either. Um, they don't really think about it, I think, from day to day. What does life affirmation actually mean? It means you have to affirm and love and approve your existence in a time 
where many horrible things are taking place or many things you don't want to have happen are taking place. You don't have to love the garbage that you see on TV every day, but you have to accept and love and embrace the fact that you live in such a world. See the subtle difference there? You're not saying that it's good that there's a horrific civil war going on in Syria. Um, but you accept and embrace the fact that I live in a world in which these things happen. <laughs> um, good evil is not the same thing as love and hate. Um, I don't think that we as humans are capable really of jettisoning either love or hate. Um, I'm a mass of contradictions, I admit it myself. Uh, I get into some arguments and I'm a vindictive prick. But I get into other discussions, like my YouTube persona is a, I don't know, nice guy, a bit of a mind manipulator or a passive aggressive or whatever. But, you know, that's just one persona among many. I'm a zillion different things. I'm a mass of contradictions, and I accept the fact that I am that, or I would like to teach myself to accept that, that I'm not consistent that a lot of my actions don't make sense from one moment to the next because that's what it means to be human. Know thyself. Know that you are a mass of contradictions and accept and love it. That you're a flawed thing. Um, but the problem is, or the, the, the solution to the flaws in existence is who really wants any of the ideals that have been placed in front of us? I honestly don't want the Christian heaven that's been offered to me by other people. Uh, I don't want to live in nirvana. I don't want to, you know, all this other stuff that, that you know, the, the sublime world of the forms or ideals or to live among the gods or something like that. Um, sometimes I guess I do, but I would like to cultivate that aspect of myself that says existence is all there is. I can love it or I can hate it. I can't see how there is anything out there than existence because I exist and I can only I can only um, evaluate things based on that one fundamental brute premise brute fact at least from my own perspective I exist now what um How do you deal with that? I would argue that there is a choice and it's almost impossible to get around that as long as you're going to make prescriptive statements. You should do this. That implies choice. It's better to do that. That implies choice. It doesn't matter if your choices are determined. It still implies choice. Um, and if we have a choice, we truly ought to exercise it.